Hello everyone, welcome back to Bill Mix Sci-Fi TV. Or whatever we're calling it, Mike Sci-Fi TV, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's me, hi, Bill McCormick, Bill Mix Sci-Fi. Uh, happy Thor's Day to you all. I hope the thunder down under is putting some lightning in your loins. You know, celebrate the day. It does, after all, named after a Norse god of big noises. I always thought it'd be great if it was actually a Norse god of farts and we just mistranslated it, but whatever. All right, um, last week I read from Splice, uh, from chapter one, and uh, explained that the uh, actual recording of the beautiful audiobook that we're doing with uh, Stan Scora and all the nice people uh, over at his studio. Uh, it's a little delayed because I need surgery so I can walk again. Um, sorry about that. It, it didn't mean to screw up your day, but it's just, it is what it is. Anyway, so uh, some people wrote and said, you know, as long as you're going to be some sort of cripple sitting around the apartment doing nothing, could you read us a little more splice? So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to read you a little more splice. Now, I read you from chapter one. Last week, uh, this time I'm going to pull all the way up into chapter 27. Uh, Splice has been given the name Robert by a uh, Mafia Don, because that's what you do when you're with Mafia Dons, you let them rename you. And um, he's been using that name, and he's now worked his way into the Marines. And this is his first day in Afghanistan. So, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely thing. And for anyone who's served in Afghanistan, this kind of hits home. And for anyone who hasn't served in Afghanistan... This is why people don't want to live there. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Chapter 27, Splice, Hit Pit Technology. <laughs> uh, there was hot, fucking hot, and what's this shit level hot? There didn't seem to be any other temperatures. The sand was omnipresent, the sun was a lethal weapon, and the locals seemed amused at America's continuing discomfort. However, over the first three weeks on the ground, Robert had grown used to it. He kept a crazy, an easy routine, and he had to admit he didn't miss New York snows. He and Kat were in the barracks next to each other and had become fast friends. She seemed to have a bizarre and challenging past, but Robert didn't question much. He just filled her in, filed her in the kindred spirit section of his mind. After all, who was he to comment on an odd childhood? He'd been on a few patrols so far and was happy they'd all been uneventful. Today was a routine jaunt, mostly just to get some exercise, according to the lieutenant but they geared up as though they were going to see combat anyway. About three miles from base, all hell broke loose. A roadside bomb exploded, sending two, out, two Oshkosh MATVs spinning into the air. They may have been built to be mine resistant, but they couldn't avoid physics. Apply enough force and a thing will move. Apply enough fucking force and a thing will fucking fly. <laughs> Gunfire erupted from beneath the sands as the enemy combatants crawled out and pinned down the Americans. Robert was able to ignore the whistling sounds and exploding sands while grabbing a bloody soldier and dragging him to safety. The lieutenant yelled something at the radio operator. If no one else heard him, it didn't matter. The operator jumped into action. He glanced at his pad, noted their MGRS location, and grabbed the mic. He began praying for salvation as only a military could. He transmitted their location and then began talking. We are pinned down. Repeat. We are pinned down. We are requesting air support. He became the luckiest radio operator in the history of radio operators when Captain Mark Bradshaw and his three Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolts, lovingly known as Warthogs, replied. Roger that, Command. We are ten seconds from target area. Okay, so the radio operator wasn't command or even an officer, nor did he, but now did not seem like the best time to start issuing corrections. He just looked heavenward and thanked his personal lord and savior profusely. The planes came screaming out of the sky at, a hundred, at hundreds of miles an hour, raining death on the enemy. Soon enough, the battle was ended and the enemy, what was left of them, on the run. The lieutenant yelled for everyone to hold their ground. He didn't want angry and disoriented troops lost in the desert. There was smoke and debris everywhere. Marines could be heard crying in pain and those who were able hustled to help them. No matter what had just happened, training took over and lives were saved. Bodies were pulled from the combat vehicles and were found to be shaken, not dead. The Marine Robert was tending had just arrived in the morning. He didn't even know his name, and now, with the name tag blown off, wouldn't for a while. Even so, bloodied and wounded, the young Marine seemed to have a sense of humor. Thanks. So other than this, Marine, how was your first day? Splice, hit big technology. Uh, it's up for the best science fiction novel of 2020. There's a link below. You can vote until January 14th. Please vote. We love you. Vote, 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 vote for me. Um... That's a kind of a cool honor, actually. It's a, it's a reader's poll, so it means people read the book, they selected the book, and then it went into 
enough people selected it that it made the list and um here we are uh so that's really cool I'm, I'm glad people are liking the book i'm glad they're enjoying it i would love to win the award though just because i don't really win those things so kind of nice to win this one whatever but uh like i said there's a link below you can go and uh have some fun and vote for splice hit Pick technology written by me uh it's from the car characters created by Watchdog Entertainment, and it's all licensed to Aesop Kem, my home away from home. And uh, it's really good. It's a good book. It's a good book. I'm really proud of it. Um, next week, I'll have other stuff for you, but this week I had this. So in the meantime, I thank you all for watching, and I wish you a pleasant day.